Hello, this is Peter Sai for DellTechCenter.com. Today I'm going to show you the Dell PowerEdge M1000E Chassis Management Controller 3.0 demo. I'm going to walk you through the menus, tabs, and features of the CMC interface so you can get a better idea of what it's like to use the product. We're going to access the CMC through our web interface here. We're going to enter our username, root, and our password. We're going to set our session timeout to 180 minutes. When we log into the interface, you can see immediately there's been some changes from the previous version. Uh, the most noticeable difference is the graphical interface on the left that represents all of the chassis components. You can roll your mouse over to any of the servers, LCD components, I.O. modules, KVM slots, uh, power supplies, fans, and the CMC itself. Every time you roll over, you're going to get a little bit of information about each of the components. In the upper left hand corner, we can see the CMC name. Moving over to the summary section, we can click on any of the quick links at the top to view network, IP, chassis, or IKVM information. In the upper right corner, we can click on help, and it'll bring up page specific help items for whatever page that you're on. You can also see that there's new refresh and print icons. Moving over to the setup tab, we can see general information such as the chassis name and we can set the chassis location. In this case we're in the Tech Center lab. In the date and time section of the setup tab we can set the date and time manually or we can choose to sync to an NTP server. As you can see here we can also bring up the help menu. Moving over to the power tab we can view the power consumption for the entire chassis or we can view the power consumption for each individual blade. On the configuration page, we can set our input power cap, and we can also set our redundancy policy using this drop-down menu. On the budget status page, we can see how we're actually doing against our power cap uh, by individual blade. And on the control page, we can set our power control operation settings. Moving over to the log page, we can save out our hardware log or any other log by clicking on the Save Log button, as shown here. Our CMC log shows us various CMC events, such as login attempts. Moving over to the Network tab, we can see the various settings uh, for IPv4 or IPv6. On the VLAN tab, we can set various network priority settings for each individual blade inside of the chassis. Here we have all priorities set equally so that no blade gets priority. On the SSL menu, we have various certificate settings. And in the sessions menu, we can see what users are signed in currently, and we can terminate those sessions if we want to. On the services page, we can manage various aspects of how the users connect to the CMC, whether that be through Telnet, Rack Admin, or through the web interface. User authentication gets its own tab in this version of CMC. Previously, this was under the networking tab. We can view various users, and we can grant or deny various privileges simply by checking boxes and then clicking on Apply. Currently, we're looking at root. Now we're going to go into the guest user, and as you can see, they have significantly fewer privileges than the root. In our directory services page, you can set the type of directory service you would like to use. Moving on to the alerts tab, you can set the events that you would like to be alerted on. You can also set your trap settings and the destination that you would like to send those events to. You can also be alerted via email. Here we can set the SMTP server we'd like to use and the email address we'd like to send those alerts to. On the troubleshooting tab, we can blink and unblink any of the servers inside of the system simply by ticking these boxes and clicking blink or unblink. On the diagnostics page, we can run command line commands. Here, I'm going to type in ifconfig and click on submit, and then we're going to get a result returned to us. We can also reset any of the components inside of the chassis. This is a virtual receipt and it's quite handy if we don't want to actually go into the data center and physically receipt those components. 
Moving on to the Update tab, we can update our CMC firmware, Input Output Module firmware, IKVM or IDRAC6 firmware by ticking the box and clicking on Apply Update. Next, we're going to look at the Chassis Controller section over on the left. As you can see, we have similar information that we've seen under the Chassis Overview. We have the Troubleshooting tab where we can again unblink and blink the lights. And we also have an Update tab where we can update the firmware for the various components inside of the Chassis. We also have the Help menu available to us as we do on every other page. Moving over to the Server Overview on the left side here. We can view all of the blades inside of the chassis in a single glance here, and we can also launch the iDRAC GUI for each individual blade, or we can launch the remote console for those blade systems having the iDRAC 6 or higher. On the WWN slash Mac page, we can view the Mac addresses for all of the components inside of each individual server, and it's broken down for us here by slot. On the Setup tab in the Server Overview, we have all of our iDRAC settings here, inclu including Quick Deploy. We can reset our passwords, and we can set gateways, and, among other options. We can also access the VLAN settings page here, as we did earlier. On the next page, we can specify which system we want to be the first boot device in the chassis. And on the Slot Names page, we can rename each of the individual slots We don't have Flex Address installed on this particular system. Flex Address assigns the MAC address to the slot instead of the hardware that's in the slot. This is useful when we want to perform an upgrade or a replacement so that when we insert the new blade into the slot, we don't have to update settings. The next page is Remote File Share. We can specify a remote file share path and username and password to access that. On the Power tab, you can see the various power options and priority settings. And on the Priority page, we can actually set the priority similar to the way that we did for the VLAN. Here you can see we can assign a priority of 1 through 9. On the Troubleshooting tab, we can blink and unblink the servers, as you've seen previously on a couple of other pages. And again, on the Update tab, you can update the firmware for the various components. Here I'm rolling over to the left side. I'm rolling over each system here pre that's present inside the chassis. And we can see the model number and service tag very quickly. Instead of accessing the full menu, we can just roll over them to get that quick info. When I actually do click on this blade system, we can see all of the properties here. We get an option to launch the Drat GUI or to launch a remote console. On the Setup tab, I can set up my first boot device, whether that be Pixie, the hard drive, local CD or DVD, etc. And as I explained earlier, we don't have Flex Address installed here, so I won't look at that. On the Power tab, we can set the power control operations. And now I'm going to go back to the Properties tab so that we can look at the iDRAC GUI. So here I'm launching that. It looks very similar to the CMC GUI just for the individual server here. And we can also launch a remote console. This particular system is running ESX, so here's the view as if you were on the server itself. Now we're going to look at the I.O. module overview where we can see each of the I.O. slots on the back of the chassis here. We can see the fabric type and the name. We can also launch the GUI that controls the I.O. module. On the Setup tab, we can assign IP addresses to each of the I.O. modules. On the Power tab, we can perform operations on each of the I.O. modules. And on the Troubleshooting tab, we can blink and unblink lights as we've been able to previously. On the Update tab, we can update the firmware of each of the I.O. modules, just like we did previously on, on other pages as well. I'm going to click through here to the Gigabit Ethernet I.O. module. We can see the status, the health, various information, 
we can set IP addresses and then we can do the power operations again. I can also roll over each of the IO modules as I did with the servers and get some general info quickly and I can also click through again to set up and change the IP addresses or perform power operations. Moving on to temperature sensors, we can see the ambient temperature and the threshold maximum of all of the servers that we have in the chassis here. I'm going to return to the chassis overview to get a better view of the fans, the IKVM, and the power supplies. Here I'm rolling over fan slot number two. I can see that health is okay and I can see the speed in RPM. If I click on fan status, I can see at a glance the status of all of the fans inside of the chassis. Here we can see they're all healthy. Going back to the chassis overview, I'm going to go back and roll over over the IKVM here. Same thing here. We can go to the status and we get more information. The health is good. We can see the firmware version and we can see that it is present and the power status is on. On the setup tab I can change options by unticking boxes and on the update tab again we've seen this already we can update the firmware for the various IO components. Now we're going to go look at the power supply unit status. I can move my cursor down to the graphical representation of the back of the chassis. I move my cursor over the power supply unit and when I hover over it I get general info. Here we're looking at PSU slot 3 and 4. Now I want to look at all the power supply statuses so I click on the link here and I can see that the health of all of them is good. Finally we're going to use SSH to log into the CMC. I'm going to log in as root and I'm going to type in help to see a list of all available commands. First we're going to run a git chassis name command to see that the name here matches the name in the upper left corner, R6M1000E. Then we're going to run git IO info. We can see our IO modules here, and we can go over to the left and see that both of them match up. Thanks for tuning in today to the Dell PowerEdge M1000E Chassis Management Controller 3.0 demo. To learn more about Dell technology, come join the community at www.delltechcenter.com.